guys, welcome back to Rooted in the Ozarks. On um, today's episode, we're gonna be making a play on a pasta dish, a little bit healthier. We're gonna add in some vegetables to this, but we are gonna be doing zoodles, which are zucchini noodles. And into that, we're gonna be adding a little bit of thyme, lemon, mushrooms, tomatoes, garlic, Parmesan, all the wonderful things. So the first thing we're gonna do is we are going to get our zoodles ready. So we've got four zucchinis here and we're gonna set these out. You wanna get these ready before you start doing everything else. This comes together very quickly. Zucchini is full of water, so we need to get you know, as much of that water out as possible so we don't end up with a watery mess at the end of this. So we've got our zucchinis here, and we are going to take and cut off each side of it there. This right in there off the top here and the bottom. One thing you do want to watch though when you're making this dish is, you know, right now we've got zucchinis everywhere and they're massive. Um, if you're using, you know, one of these noodle, um, veggie noodle makers, a zoodler is what I call it, you want to make sure that your vegetable is going to be small enough to fit in here. So, you know, maybe look for the little bit smaller sizes. You know, if you're growing them, you know, maybe pick them before they get super massive. Okay, and so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out some paper towels just so this can, you know, soak up some of that water. You could also sprinkle them with a little bit of salt if you wanted to, you know, if you were running out of time, you needed to get it done super quick, you know, you could do that. But just laying them out, you know, on this paper towel while you're making this is really gonna get a lot of that out there. So we're gonna set it to a thick or a thin side. I prefer, you know, if I'm making zucchini noodles, I like them to be the thick ones. So we're just gonna stick this in here. You don't even have to peel it. And we're just gonna start making our noodles. Okay, so when you get to the end of this, you know, for safety reasons, we're gonna take this other end off of here and get out, this is a lot of the seeds and that's what has a lot of the water in it. And we're gonna take this end, push it in there and continue on. I have cut myself a few times on this so you definitely wanna use that feature on it. Okay, get the rest of that out of here, pull these. And you are gonna end up with a little piece, you know, that didn't go through. What I like to do with that, you know, you can either toss it in the fridge, chop it up, you know, if you're doing, say, frittata or something like that, or you could also chop it up, throw it in your pasta dish. So now we've got our noodles here, and they actually turn out super long. It's wonderful, you know, they're like real pasta noodles. So cool, you can, you know, tear them in half if you want to. Um, you can chop them up. I used to, you know, normally just leave them as they are. We're gonna lay these out so they can get some of the water out of them. Okay. And this is nice too, it's a lot quicker than heating up water, cooking your noodles. It's a lot better for you, so you can eat, you know, like twice as much pasta as you normally would let yourself and you don't have to feel bad about it. It's filling, it's good. It's, you know, doing something with all the zucchini that you might have right now. We'll do a couple more here. And depending, you know, on if you're making it for yourself, if you're making it, you know, for a group of people, you know, would depend on how many noodles that you use. I would say normally, you know, like if it's dinner time and you've worked all day or you've been outside all day and you're just starving, I would do at least two for yourself. Okay, we've got our second zucchini here. And I think we'll do, let's see, let's do one more and then we will be good back on. Okay, so we've got our third zucchini on here. We're just going to lay that out. Perfect. Okay, so the next thing that we want to do is we want to go ahead and get our mushrooms ready to go in this. We've got some beautiful shiitakes from Sweden Creek 
They're always delicious. We're going to add in, you know, this is going to give you a lot of protein. You know, if you don't want to add any meat, you know, to maybe your dinner or you don't eat meat, this is perfect. It's going to have that nice meaty texture without actually having the meat in it. So we do want to clean our mushrooms, but we don't want to, you know, submerge them in the water. Um, if you submerge them in the water, you take a chance of bruising them, breaking them up, you know, soaking in too much um, liquid into them. So you just want to take a paper towel and damply wipe them off. You can definitely use the stems in this dish if you want to. We're actually going to save them, um, and they work great in vegetable broths or, you know, a chicken broth or anything like that. Um, if you know you aren't going to be making a broth anytime soon, you can throw them into, say, like a Ziploc bag or a jar and pop them in the freezer and freeze them until actually you're ready to make that broth with them. Um, you know, same thing with your onions, your carrots, um, your herbs. You know, you can freeze them up make your broth with those. So now what we are going to do is we're just gonna take, chop these stems off here, pop them in that bag so we can put them in the freezer and make a broth with them later. Or you could definitely, you know, chop them up and put them in here as well. So now what we're going to do is we're just going to do some pretty thick slices on this. They will sort of reduce down in size once we get them over here in the skillet. So we're just going to cut them, you know, normally if they're about this size, I'd say in thirds or fourths. If maybe you don't like mushrooms as much or someone, you know, that's going to be eating with you doesn't like them as much, you could definitely make them a little bit smaller and that would reduce the size when they were done and make them a little bit easier for them to eat. But these are so good, I don't know how anybody couldn't like them. Okay, so we've got our mushrooms ready to go. We're going to stick them over here in a pile. The next thing we're going to do, because we need this jar, is we're going to go ahead and chop up our tomatoes and move them over. So again, we're using cherry tomatoes in this one. They are just the perfect size. Um, and tomatoes are my favorite food, so I will just eat a tomato like an apple, I'll eat, you know, a pint of tomatoes in one setting. Um, I love them so much. So now we've got our jar, we can go ahead and make our dressing to go on this. So we're going to add in our olive oil here. Perfect. The next thing we're going to add in is some lemon zest and some lemon juice. So we're going to get a lot of our lemony flavor out of the actual peel itself. Um, you want to make sure, you know, that you are using organic lemons when you're doing this. That way, you know, anything that might be on the outside of the peel isn't going to go into your dish. So before we chop it open and get that juice out of there, we're going to go ahead and zest it and just move it around. Once you start seeing this white-ish area, that's when you want to stop. That's the pith, it's bitter, it's not gonna be good, you know, in your dish, you definitely don't wanna add that in there. Okay, so we've got quite a bit of this off into our olive oil here. We've got some on the back, we just wanna make sure we get the rest of that down there. Just sort of mix those up. All right, so we've got that. Now we wanna cut this open. going to get the juice out of here. If you've got a zester, you definitely want to use that. If not, we're just going to squeeze this by hand. If you've got any seeds, you know, that are just right there at the edge of it, you can go ahead and just use your knife, sort of get those out of there. Okay, so the next thing, we just want to add some salt and pepper in here. Very simple. And we're going to shake this up, set it to the side, so then when we're ready to add this into our pasta dish, it can just go in super quick. We don't have to stop, you know, and do this part of it. The salt, a little bit of pepper. We're going to grab our lid here. Okay, that is ready to go. So we'll set this over here, and we will 
continue on. Um, since this one does cook so quickly, you know, you do want to make sure that you have everything prepped and ready to go beforehand. Um, we're also going to be using some more of this elephant garlic that we've used before. It's so delicious. It's mild in flavor. It's just wonderful. We're going to get this other one ready to go as well. So now we're just going to mince up our garlic here. And now we're going to go ahead and get this turned on and start getting it hot because then we'll be ready to just throw everything in there. So we do have our olive oil, you know, that we mix with our garlic. We want to add a little bit extra that's not infused with anything. Um, that's going to heat up. That's going to cook everything. That way we're not going to lose our flavors, you know, of the lemon zest or anything like that in there. So we're going to do some olive oil on the bottom of that. Want to make sure that it coats your pan. If you've got a pan, you know, that's got sides on it, you definitely want to use that because we're going to be adding this pasta in at the very end. So you want to make sure it's not going to be, you know, flying everywhere all over your stovetop. So we'll finish doing our garlic while we're waiting on that. Okay, so we've got these in nice chunks. We'll just go back over it a couple more times. Again, this garlic is not as um, robust, not as potent as the other smaller garlics, so we can add a lot more. We can leave these chunks a little bit bigger, um, and it's not going to be, you know, a huge garlic bite that you're going to get. Okay, so these are ready to go. And now what we're going to do is we're going to add our mushrooms in to our olive oil here. This is nice and hot. We want to listen for that sound. It's starting to sizzle. It needs to heat up just a little bit more. You got some pieces that are stuck together, you know, you can grab them beforehand. As they cook, they're, you know, going to break down. And we don't want to add, you know, all of them in when it's not like super hot because then the mushrooms could soak in all of that olive oil. We'll have to add more. They'll end up being, you know, really mushy um, and make your dish not, you know, as great as it would be. We're also going to get some thyme ready. Um, thyme is one of my favorites. It was one, when I first started using it though, I sort of had a love-hate relationship with it. Um, I just felt like it was a lot of work for such a small little herb. So I tried taking shortcuts with a few things. I was like, oh, it'll be okay. You know, I don't need to add the time into it. Um, and I was wrong. It definitely needed the time. Um, so in my opinion, you know, it's definitely worth the extra time to uh, get it in your dish. If you don't have fresh time, you know, or maybe, uh, you know, you, uh, ran out or whatever the reason, you could definitely use some dried thyme. The rule of thumb is if you're using a dry herb in place of a fresh herb, use half of the amount. And I would probably start with a little bit less than that. And if you want to add some more, you could definitely add some more um, at the end of that. So what we want to do is we're just going to hold this here and pull down. Okay, so this is hot now. We're going to add in the rest of our mushrooms here and let these cook for a few minutes, sort of break down before we start adding everything else in. There we go, that's the sound that we're looking for. We wanna make sure that they're all coated with the olive oil. We don't want them to burn. Beautiful, okay. Finish working on our thyme. You know, you could definitely add in um, basil to this dish. We're going to add in a little bit of Italian parsley to it. Okay. Another thing you could do is if you didn't want to, you know, take um, the extra time or didn't have it to go ahead and get the leaves off of here, you could take a few of these, you know, whole and pop them in the olive oil and let that sort of infuse into the olive oil um, and then pull them out. So you could definitely do that as well. Next thing we're going to do 
is we're gonna go ahead and add in our garlic into this. Okay, so we've got our garlic. And just like with regular garlic, you know, we wanna watch this, make sure it doesn't burn. Um, if your garlic burns in your pan, you know, you've gotta start over. So, let's go ahead and we're gonna stir these around. But we do want them to cook just a little bit, you know, before we add anything else in here because we really want to bring out that garlic flavor. Okay. Lift this off of here. Sometimes if I'm doing garlic or ginger or shallots or something very delicate, um, you know, I'll go ahead and lift that off of there as I'm stirring it around. Um, just so, you know, it's not on that heat. Okay, the next thing we're gonna add in is our tomatoes, and that's gonna release some juices into this. Perfect. We wanna stir these around. It's gonna blister these tomatoes, and they are so delicious. You know, if you are just making a pasta dish and you're not adding anything else to it but some tomatoes, if you can just throw those tomatoes in a skillet for just a couple minutes, let them blister up, oh, it's gonna make it so much better than what it would be without. So good. All right, so now we're gonna get our parsley ready to go in here. We've got our thyme. We've got some beautiful local parsley here. And parsley is actually the parent herb to a lot of your favorite ones like basil, cilantro. So that's why a lot of the times Time also um, is paired with another herb because it actually helps intensify those flavors, brings those flavors out a lot more than if they would be by themselves. Okay, got our tomatoes in here. We'll finish chopping up our parsley. Then we're going to add our thyme in. We're going to add our noodles in. We're going to add in our lemon juice. Another way you could make this. Um, is instead of using olive oil, you could use butter. You could actually take thyme and parsley and basil um, and infuse your butter with that. You would just take it, let it soften up, roll it in these fresh herbs, and then sort of put it back together with some parchment paper and put it in your fridge. And you can use it, you know, however you want to. You can put it on a hot steak, you can put it in pasta. It's just, it's wonderful, it's so good. So you could also do that as well. All right, so this is looking good. We're gonna go ahead, we got that thyme in there. Let's add in a little bit of the parsley. We'll add in the rest here in just a minute. Let's get these noodles added in here as well. So we'll start with this and add the rest of that in in just a minute. We wanna stir this all together. And this zucchini, you know, this is also gonna add in a wonderful, um, you know, little bit amount of water in there that's really gonna sort of help, you know, steam this up, bring it together, good to go. Now we're gonna add in our lemon juice and olive oil, salt and pepper. Got a couple of lemon seeds in there that decided they wanted to stick around, which I don't blame them. I would definitely want to go in this pasta as well. Now we're just gonna mix everything together. Our tomatoes have broken down um, and then created a beautiful, delicious, you know, sauce on their own. Mix in with the fresh herbs, um, our garlic in here, our mushrooms. All right, so we do want to add a little bit of pepper to this. We've got it in our sauce. I like to add a little bit more in so that I can get on the vegetables um, and sort of, you know, help bring it all together. Some fresh cracked pepper in. Okay, so we're going to take the last bit of our parsley that we have here. We're going to add that right inside there. Stir this all together. And this is gonna, you know, help soften up your zucchini noodles a bit too. 
and you don't even necessarily have to cook them. They're very delicious, you know, raw. Our noodles are nice and bright. Our vegetables are cooked beautifully. We've got that nice sauce in the bottom here. So we're gonna go ahead and start to plate this. So you could do this a couple of different ways. We're gonna be adding some fresh Parmesan onto the top of it. You could either take that Parmesan, grate it right inside this pasta here, and sort of let it latch on um, in the dish, or you could just go ahead, grate it on top of the dish that you're gonna be serving it in, which is what I prefer to do. That way you don't have a clump, you know, where the cheese is melted and sort of just got everything clumped together. So what we're gonna do is hopefully this will turn out right. We're gonna take our tongs here and we're gonna grab some of these noodles and we're gonna grab them and as we put them into our bowl, we're gonna twist. So that's gonna create sort of that mound that you see you know, when you get a beautiful noodle dish. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. That just means you have to practice with it. Then you get to eat more noodles. So it's all a win-win situation. All right, so we've got this. We're gonna set it down here and then we're gonna go ahead and twist. And if you need to, you know, you can keep twisting that top part there. We can add a few more of our vegetables in. We need some more tomatoes, get some more of those mushrooms in there, so that parsley. Beautiful. Okay. And then you can take, you know, take a paper towel, take your dishcloth, wipe around there. You could also take, and at the very end, add a sprinkle of red pepper flakes. It's really good in this. It just sort of gives you a little bit of spice without being too overpowering. Now we're going to take our Parmesan with the same um, zester that we use for our lemon. We're going to use for our cheese, and this makes beautiful nice strips of Parmesan that will melt on here. You can add more or less depending on your preference. So now we have a beautiful pasta dish. You know, we've got it full with mushrooms, tomatoes, zucchini, thyme, parsley, lemon, elephant garlic, all of these things that are so prominent right now um, and that are so delicious and they are all added together into this simple weeknight dinner. Thank you guys for joining us, and I hope you enjoy making this for yourself. Thank you.